Welcome to Live in the New Life with Valentine Okeke. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So this morning we are going to look at the seventh principle which has to do with taking heed of what we hear and also how we hear it. It's a very important principle for two simple reasons. Because in it, it brings out the principle of cause and effect. As we are going to see in the scriptures this morning. So let's quickly go to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verse 24. The King James puts it this way, he said, Take heed what you hear, with what measure you met, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. So he's bringing out the principle of use. The principle of proportion. And when you put these two principles together, you come up with what I call the principle of cause and effect. That means that whatever you put to use, the benefit that you're going to get, the reward that you're going to get, will always be proportionate to what you have put in. That is the principle of cause and effect. If you go to Matthew chapter 13 verse 8, it talks about hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. But too many times in Christendom we've been taught that you can sow anything and you reap hundredfold return. It does not happen that way. Because of this principle of cause and effect, that everything will produce according to the proportion by which you sow. So if you give one naira, you will reap the equivalent of one naira. If you sow 10,000, you will reap the equivalent of 10,000. If it's 1 million, you will reap the equivalent of 1 million. You cannot sow 1 naira and reap the equivalent of 1 million. It doesn't happen that way. So it's very important. It's a very important principle. Then if you go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 8, verse 18, it says there, Take heed, therefore, how you hear. For whosoever had to him shall be given, and whosoever had not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemed to have. So in other words, what he's saying is that whatever you don't put to use will be taken from you. So he's still talking about the principle of putting into effect that that you have been given. You remember the parable of the talent. One was given five, the other was given how many? Two, and another one was given one. I believe the master gave them based on their abilities. The one that was given five went to work and eventually doubled it. He got five back. The one that was given two also went to work he put to use the two that was given to him. He came back with additional two. The one that was given one, because he's a lazy fellow, oh, he saw the wind, he saw the lion, and he decided to go and bury his talent. And at the day of reckoning, he brought it back to the master. That I know you are a hard man. I don't want to take any risk with you. So that that you have given to me, I kept it. So please, can you have it? And what was it? What was the reaction of the master? He collected it from him and gave to the one that knows how to utilize what has been given. 
So you need, you begin to see that when resources are made available to you, it's either you put it to work or you don't. And if you don't put it to work, you will lose it. But when you put it to work, you're bound to gain proportionately to the effort that you have put in. So there are some things that we need to learn there. The first is time. The second is energy. The third is risk. And the fourth is money. So when things are made available to you, you deploy time, you deploy energy, you take the necessary risk, and you put out money. Once you do these four things, you're bound to receive a reward. And you know that time is the most precious treasure that you have. Because your life is built on time. The stuff that your life is made of is time. And God made it so simple that no matter how tall or short, how big or small, we all have how many hours? 24 hours in the day. And what makes the difference between the person that is rich and poor, in most cases, is how you deploy your time. So it's so important, the management of your time, the management of your energy, the risk that you're prepared to take, and how you deploy your resources these are the things that make the difference between success and failure in life. I know you're wondering, but you said we're talking about take heed of what you hear. Very soon we're going to see to what extent what we hear affects us in life. Because what you hear is a major source of input to your thought life. I want you to take note of it. What you hear is a major source of input into your thought life. So the gateway into your thought life, one of them, one of the major input is what? is what you hear. What you hear will affect what you think. And what you think will affect how you feel. And how you feel will eventually affect how you act. So hearing is a major gateway into your thought life. I want you to take note of that. In Mark 4.24, we read, take heed, what you hear is talking about the content. Then in Luke chapter 8, verse 18, when he said, take heed how you hear, it's talking about the concentration, the attention that you paid to what you hear. So we're going to briefly look at the various sources through which you get input into your hearing process. The first is from God. The second is from the devil. The third is from people. The fourth is from the world. The first is from God. We are expected to hear from God. Through his word, he speaks to us. 
every minute through his creation he speaks to us when we see the things that God has created it gives us an idea who he is so nature itself speaks to us then of course the devil speaks people will also speak into your life and also the world will speak into your life so we're going to look at these four aspects since they are major sources of information into our thought life We are told in Romans chapter 10 verse 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what produces faith is the word of God. And we know that God and his word are one. And the word of God is the voice of God. So if we accept that, that means that when we pick our Bible and begin to read our Bible as it were, is God speaking to us. And when we accept that fact, that it is God speaking to us when we are studying and reading our Bible, it simply means that the voice of God that we are hearing through his word produces what we call faith. And faith is the only legal tender that you can use in transacting anything in heaven. Please take note of it. Faith, as it were, is the only legal currency that you can use in transacting anything in heaven. And that is why we are told that without faith, it is impossible to please God so that means that without faith you will not be able to obtain anything from heaven so for you to be able to have the currency to trade in heavenly transactions you must of necessity hear the voice of God which is the word of God now, fear comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of the devil. And this morning we are going to look at what transpired in the garden. How the devil came into the picture, what he said. If you remember, the devil never forced Eve to disobey God. All that the devil did was to suggest to her. So when the devil made that suggestion, Eve took time to think about what the devil suggested before she acted on it. And the devil is still using the same strategy today. The devil will never force you to do anything. He will just chip in something. He will create that gap, that doubt. That's all he's interested in. He will just make that suggestion, chip in something, and allow you to go and wrestle with it. So that's why I said that Hearing is a very important process that affects what we do, how we act. So we cannot afford to open our ears to any kind of junk. So God expects us to do two things. Wait the things that we hear. The first is that we must test what we hear. Just like 
You use your mouth, your tongue to test food. You also use your ears to test the word that is coming to it. You must test it. Many Christians have lost their ability to test. I remember in those days when we were kids, my grandmom apparently is now that I know, you know some people cannot test salt. Smokers especially don't test salt. That's why when you see a smoker eating, he's always adding a lot of salt because they find it difficult to test salt. The sensory organs on the tongue that aids you to test, they bond it off with the smoke that they inhale. So they find it difficult to test salt. So they eat a lot of salt. They tend to eat a lot of salt. Then you can't eat the food that most smokers eat. So in those days, one of the things I enjoy staying with my grandma is that when she adds salt, she will turn the soup and say, America, open your hands, take it, I will test. Said okay, that it remains small. So I'm the one that tests the salt for her. When she asks Pepe, I'm also the one that tests it for her. So I also wait. By the time the soup is done, I'm also the one that will test it for her. But the one I enjoy most is the portion of the meat. She will pick out one piece of the meat, slice it, and say that I should test whether it's done. I enjoy that one so much. I will test it. Even when it's done, I will tell her that it remains small. <laughs> Amen? Because that means that that will avail me the opportunity for the second test. And of course, the testing means that you will swallow it. Am I right? So, God expects us to test the things that we hear. I know some of you will be wondering, are you really sure that it's in the scriptures? Let's quickly go to Job chapter 12, verse 11. It says that just as the mouth tests good food, so the ear tests the word, the words that he hears. Job chapter 12, verse 11. It says that just as the mouth tests good food, so the ear tests the words it hears. So God expects his children to test what is entering their ears. The second thing that God expects us to do is to filter. He expects us to filter the things that we have heard. If you go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. It says there, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. That's the first thing he expects you to fix your thoughts on. So if something is not true, if it's not honorable, if it's not right, God 
expects his children not to fix their thoughts on it. The one that will shock you now, I want you to listen and listen attentively. Even when something is true, because you can see the condition for you to fix your thoughts, it must be true, it must be honorable, it must be right. You've seen the three conditions for you to fix your thoughts. It must be true, it must be honorable, and it must be right. So if something is true and it's not honorable, are you expected to fix your thought on it? If something is true and honorable, but it is not right, are you expected to fix your thoughts on it? Are you getting the drift? So the only thing that you can fix your thoughts on are the things that are right, honorable, and right. So once something is not honorable, God expects you not to fix your thought on such things. If we apply this principle, it will take care of a lot of gossip that takes place in the in Christendom. There are a lot of things that are not honorable. But we go ahead and keep talking about them. Simply because we have thought about them. Because you see, the things that you think about will affect the way you feel. And the way you feel will eventually affect the way you act. The way you talk. The way you respond to issues. So if we apply the principles embedded in Philippians 4.8 and filter the things that we hear, there are a lot of things that we will not give second thought to. That as soon as we hear it, we discard it immediately. Then it says, think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So if it's not excellent, if it's not worthy of praise, don't think about such things. So let's now go back, because we said that we have four major sources through which we hear. The first we said is from God, which is the Bible, and we've seen it that faith comes through hearing and hearing by the word of God. What that simply means is that when you study your Bible, as it were, it's God speaking to you. And when you hear what God is saying, it produces faith. And that faith enables you to be able to transact heavenly things. And without that faith, it is completely impossible for you to please God. So faith is important. The word of God produces faith that enables us to transact in the kingdom. The second one we talked about, we said the devil, he will not force you to do his bidding. He will simply suggest to you so let's quickly go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was the shrewdest of all the creatures that the Lord had made. Really? He asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat any of the fruit in the garden? Verse 2, of course we may eat it, the woman told him. It's only the fruit from the tree at the center of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God says, 
Look at the woman telling the devil what God said. God says we must not eat or even touch it or we will die. You wouldn't die. That's the devil talking now. He told Eve you wouldn't die. The serpent hissed. God knows that your eyes will be opened when you eat it. You will become just like God, knowing everything, good and evil. The woman was convinced the fruit looked so fresh and delicious, and it will make her to be wise. So she ate some of the fruit. She also gave some to the husband who was with her. Then he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So you see that Satan did not try to force Eve into disobeying God. He simply maneuvered her into thinking about it. He just suggested the benefits that she would need to consider. It's like what we are told in Psalm 1. They will entice you. They will suggest things to you, the benefits of the things that you're going to gain, and now allow you to wrestle with it. That's the strategy of the devil. He will just tell you that once you do this, these are the benefits. You get out of poverty overnight and you start swinging. You'll be able to spend all your holidays abroad. You'll be able to eat the best of food, wear the designers wear. Oh, people will recognize you. You will attend all the parties, all the ceremonies, you know. So those things will begin to consume you. You will begin to think about those things. But what God said, you relegate it to the background. If you notice something, that fruit had always been there. Did it change? What changed? Sorry? The mindset. For the first time, Eve started seeing that fruit in a different light. Because the mindset changed. Based on the benefits she was to derive from eating that fruit. So the devil will always suggest something. That is his strategy. Are you following? So when we talk about one of the major sources through which we hear things. Too many times, that's the way the devil comes in. And notice something, he will always challenge the word of God. He will twist, had God said, are you sure? He will create that credibility gap for you. He doesn't speak his own words. He takes the one that God had spoken and he will twist it. So it's very important that we take heed what we hear, the content of what we hear. Then the third one is people. Let's quickly go to the book of Esther. You remember Esther? The book of Esther, chapter 2. You all know the story, so we wouldn't go into the story this morning. From verse 15. Remember the king was trying to replace the queen. And they brought the pretty virgins in the land to enable the king to select who will replace the queen. But something happened to Esther. The eunuch that takes care of the maiden 
made some suggestions to Esther towards her preparation for the day she will go and visit the king. And we are told that Esther hearkened unto all that was suggested to her. And the effect of it was that at the end of the day, Esther was chosen to replace the queen. So you can see how suggestions from human beings can also affect your life. We are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, that evil association corrupts what? Good manners. Evil communications affect good character. One translation puts it that way. So, but in this case, this communication brought favor to Esther. So Esther chapter 2, verse 15. And when it was Esther's turn to go to the king, she accepted the advice of Haggai, the Enoch, in charge of the harem. She asked for nothing except what he suggested, and she was admired by everyone who saw her. When Esther was taken to king, to the king, at the royal palace in the early winter of the seventh year of his reign, the king loved her more than any of the other young women. He was so delighted with her that he set the royal crown on her head and declared her queen instead of Vesti. Have you seen it there? Esther accepted what? The suggestion that Haggai made. And in the process, what happened? She was highly favored and she now became the queen. Likewise, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we are told not to conform to, to the world's pattern. Because when you look at the things of the world, it's another major source of input into your hearing system. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Have you seen it? Don't do what? Don't copy. One says, don't conform. The behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do, and you will know how good and pleasing and perfect His will really is. So you've seen the four sources through which we hear. The first is from God, the second is from the devil. The third is from people. Then the fourth is from where? From the world. And we said that the major principle that we learn from all this is the principle of what? Cost and effect. That means that everything will produce proportionately after his kind. You cannot sow one naira and reap one million. The other day I was discussing with my wife. There was a lady in the internet that was suggesting that ten dollars can give you a return of sixty five million naira. And she was asking me, based on your accounting knowledge, is this possible? I said, don't even bother to read the article. It is practically impossible. That you start with an investment of $10, and you end up with 
65 million naira. Even in less than one year. In fact, one month, that's even what compounded the whole thing. <laughs> even in a lifetime. So in less than one year, you invest $10. Not $10,000. So. And you will make 65 million naira. That's 419. So did you get something this morning? So what we hear is very, very important. God expects us to test it. God expects us to filter it. Because our hearing obeys the principle of cause and effect. What you hear will affect your thought life. And your thought life will affect how you feel. And how you feel will eventually affect how you respond or act to issues. And for you to hear, you are going to deploy four things. Number one is time. Number two is energy. Number three is risk. Number four is money. If you put them together, you have the word you call them. So anytime somebody wants to tell you something, just immediately know that there are four things that you're deploying. First is time. And anytime you lost, it's lost forever. Anytime you spent, it's spent forever. You can never get it back. So fancy sitting down to listen to gossip for two, three hours. Those hours are gone, they are gone for good. So hearing will cost you time. It will cost you energy. You're taking risk with what you're hearing. Because what you're hearing can change the whole course of your life. Just like it happened in the garden. What the devil suggested to Eve changed the whole course of humanity. Until today, mankind were still suffering from that conversation. That time that Eve gave to the devil, the energy she spent listening to him. She never considered the risk that was involved in what she was doing because if she had considered the risk, I can assure you that Eve couldn't have given a listening ear to the devil. So too many times why we run into trouble is that we don't consider the risk Tell your neighbor it's important before you give any person your ears, consider the risk that the person might subject you to. You can imagine if someone should, assuming I was not around and we discussed it, and she now decides to begin to invest in that project that when you put out $10, it will give you 65 million. What do you think will happen? Before you know it, they will wipe off her savings. But because she considered the risk that this business might be a risky one and made inquiries, she was able to get appropriate information. So too many times in life we run into trouble because we do not sit down to consider the risk associated with what we are exposing our ears to. So I want you henceforth to be very conscious that giving somebody a listening ear involves an element of risk.
when people sow the seed of discord that can tumble an entire generation, if you had considered the risk that this thing might mess up my family, you will not, maybe you wouldn't have given that person your ears. So it's very important that before you give any person your ears, you must consider the risk involved. Do you know that in those days during the military rule, many soldiers lost their lives in military coups that they did not participate, but they heard, but they did not report. They said, well, if you hear and you don't report, you're part and parcel of the queue, so you have to die. So, what I'm trying to say this morning is that hearing involves a measure of risk. If you're conscious of that, you will not lend your ears to any Tom, Dick and Harry that comes around you. Especially when you know that people, when you identify somebody as a gossiper, don't give that person any chance. Don't give the person your time. Don't give the person your energy because that person is going to run you into trouble. And you see, the risk of hearing some of these things, by the time you hear it, to get it off your heart becomes another issue. You start wrestling with it. Some people are in the hospital today because of what they had. It's now costing them time, energy, and money. And too many times, some of these things that you hear will never happen. It's a known fact that 80% of the things that you hear that create fear in your life will never happen. So we must endeavor to always consider the risk involved and test anything before we allow that thing to pass through the gateway of our ears. Because once it passes, it enters where? Into our thought life. And as we begin to meditate on those things, it creates negative emotions, energy, especially if they are falsehood that will eventually begin to undermine our lives. So it's important that we always bear that principle of cause and effect in mind when people come around to tell their story. Ask yourself, Four simple questions. Do I have the time? Do I have the energy to just sit down and listen to this junk? Can I afford the risk that is involved in what I'm hearing? Am I prepared to spend the money when the chips are down? Because when seed of discord is sowed, the process of resolving that will cost you money. A seed sown in Abuja here might involve or entail your coming down to the village for the matter to be settled. You have to travel. Everybody will be invited back home. Come, let's all sit down and trash this thing out. Something you had is now costing you time. It's costing you energy. The risk of traveling is costing you money. What happens in the process of going back? You end up with an accident. But eventually you did not die in the accident. And you end up in the orthopedic hospital and they are hanging maybe both of your legs off for the next 18 months. 
time, energy, money, the risk of losing your life, the risk of you never being the same again, walking with clutches, or ending up in the wheelchair, all because of what you had. So it's important. That's why Christ warned us to pay attention to the advice, to suggestions that people are bringing across to your life. Because if you don't, eventually you're going to pay dearly for it. So when you get home, take time to study. In fact, read that Mark chapter 4, verses 24 and 25. Then go back to Matthew chapter 13. Read the entire chapter. You see all the parables that Jesus Christ told them. They all relate to the principle of cause and effect. So anything that you're doing in life, especially when it comes to hearing, know that it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you energy. You're taking risk. And at the end of the day, it's going to cost you money. And we all stand. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. You can join us in worship every Sunday by 9 a.m. for World Feast. Venue is at the 7 Option Parks, Ladoke Akintola Boulevard, opposite Caribou Hotel, Gerki Abuja. God bless you.